you are looking at my new TPMS that I have on my VMAX. I told you in a recent video that I would be getting a new one because I didn't like the current one and the way it linked to my iPhone. So in this video, we will go over this new unit. everyone. In a recent video I explained that I didn't like my current TPMS because of the way it linked to the iPhone and I was looking for a new unit. So here it is. I've got another one that I am going to experiment with and I've installed it on the motorcycle. I haven't had it on very long but I wanted to go over and show you what little I know at this point. Um, I will at some point do a long-term review when I've had more time to mess with it and see what's going on. Uh, but for right now, I'll just give you a quick overview. Like I said, this is a uh, standalone unit, so it's not connected to my iPhone in any way, uh, which is primarily what I wanted this time around. So looking at it, you can see what is on the display, and you will probably see it time out if there's no motion. So if I'm sitting here still, uh, you will see this thing time out, and I'll just give it a tap and bring it back to life, uh, which is one of the things I like already because... I don't have to turn it on or open an app or anything like that. As soon as I get on the motorcycle, the screen lights up and it is ready to go and it's just ready to receive a signal from the sending units that are on the valve stems. And, uh, and all it takes is the bike to be in motion for a little bit to activate it and send an updated signal. Uh, but for right now, looking at the screen, you can see that it has the clock right there in the middle and just to the right of it has the battery indicator. Above it is the front wheel and below it is the rear wheel. So right now it's showing the front wheel PSI at 41 and just to the right of that the smaller number tells the air temperature inside the tire and right now it is 57 degrees Fahrenheit which by the way both PSI and uh, temperature uh, Fahrenheit uh, you can change those to other units uh, such as Celsius or KPA, I believe it is, instead of PSI. Uh, but anyway, so I'll cycle through the uh, menu options here in just a second. But I just want to let you know that this is what's going on. Now, right here, you can't see it, but uh, I will put on a different video that I have. That is actually a light, and it will flash when one of the thresholds are met. And uh, the thresholds that you can set on this is an upper PSI and a lower PSI and um, temperature as well. Uh, I believe only upper on the temperature. Uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, but either way, uh, once you reach that threshold, and for me, the one that I'm concerned about is the low threshold for PSI. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, I have adjusted the high-end PSI, the upper PSI threshold, I think I set it to around 45 PSI just so I know that I knew that I would hit it in, in relatively short time uh, just to see what happens when uh, it reaches that threshold and that light does flash and there's also an audible sound but by the time I pulled over the the audio uh, signal had quit so I didn't get a chance to record that so at some point I'll try and uh, record what that sounds like. Uh, but right now I can tell you it's not very loud and I couldn't hear it through my helmet. So I only heard it when I pulled over and stopped and opened my visor. So the audio is not something that you're going to need to rely on. But again, as long as you are riding and in motion, the screen will stay lit up. So it's just like any other instrument uh, that you have, uh, instrument panel on a motorcycle or even in a car. If you're constantly watching it, you can monitor what's going on. So. In this particular case, just looking at the numbers, uh, they are constantly visible. And I will probably set my low PSI to around 39, 38 PSI, something like that. And then if it hits that, then I'll know that something's going on and I have a leak. Uh, but anyway, for right now, let me just cycle through just to show you the options. So all you really have to do is just hold this button for a few seconds. And it lets you into the menu screen. And I'll just cycle through. I'm not going to change the thresholds at this point, but right there you can see you can adjust the PSI right there, uh, or you can change it from PSI, I believe, to KPA, I think is the other one. There I can change the, uh, the unit of measurement for the temperature. 
And then here are the thresholds uh, for the low side. I have the front wheel at 39 on the high side. I now have it at 51. Uh, again, I was just experimenting. Here's the rear wheel. Again, on the lower end, uh, 39 PSI, upper 51. There's the temperature. I think that's by default uh, at 159 degrees Fahrenheit. I didn't really mess with that. And there's the low end, I believe is 69. Uh, but again, that doesn't really interest me as much as the PSI, and that's how you set the clock. And then that gets you back to the home screen. So it's all ready to go. So again, this is just a quick video, quick overview. Uh, I will put the link to this in the description if this is something that you are interested in uh, in trying to experiment. If you don't have a TPMS already or if you're looking to swap one out uh, like I was, ready to get away from the iPhone connection, um, then this, this may be worth a shot. But like I said, I will do a long-term review when I've had more time to mess with it and tell you the pros and cons of this unit just like I did on the other unit. And, uh, and that will probably be a few months down the road after I've really had ample time to uh, weigh everything one way or the other. But that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope this was helpful. See you next time. <music>